Right. Hey guys, uh, my name is Jeremy Stover. Um, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to use the Angular directive called Angular-Google-Maps. Uh, you can just do a quick Google, uh, Google search to find that. I'm not really going to get into that right now, but again, Angular-Google-Maps. Uh, and basically all it is is a little um, helper to get a map into your project, a uh, really easy way to create markers or uh, lines or anything you need to uh, in the application. It is still in development, um, but it does a really good job um, and it has good enough documentation to where you can actually get something started. But uh, I've seen a lot of questions on how to get things to display uh, and obviously I'll do a couple more tutorials later on how to do more advanced things like doing auto resizing of the map uh, and making sure that your tiles get loaded uh, effectively and making sure there's no flicker and other things like that. But uh, to get started, um, let's pull up a terminal window. So right now I have uh, a folder that I'm inside of called angular-google-maps uh, and all this is is a Yeoman project. If you guys don't know what Yeoman is, uh, do a quick Google search. Um, but uh, the actual uh, project template that I'm using is Yo Angular, which is very popular nowadays. But um, it puts everything into a nice little package. Again, I'm not going to get into anything that's too far out of scope here. But uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do uh, to get started with Angular-Google-Maps, assuming you're using Bower, uh, we're going to do Bower install dash dash save. And what that does is it's going to install the dependencies and everything you need for angular-google-maps. And it's also going to save that dependency to your bower.json file, again, if you're using bower. Uh, and then uh, we'll actually get started with importing everything in. So bower install dash dash save angular dash google dash maps. Uh, I've already done this. It's not going to hurt if you do it again, but you're going to see a little bit more stuff. You're actually going to see all of this stuff. Um, but it's just validating that I do have it installed correctly. Uh, so the next thing you're going to need to do, let's open up Sublime, and then uh, make default. So if you go into main.html, uh, by default, when you first start up a Yeoman project, you're going to have a bunch of stuff here. Um, I actually went through and wrote down all the code already, so I didn't trip over my stuff, but we're going to write down or go through step-by-step -step how to get this to work. Uh, just as a little uh, reminder, we are using Grunt with live reload. Uh, again, that's all built into YoAngular. So if we were to type here, hello instead of hello, didn't refresh the page, automatically refreshes with this. Uh, and the reason that it's in the center of the page is YoAngular, uh, when we started it up, we chose Bower, or Bower, we chose Bootstrap, so everything's in a container right now. Again, doesn't really matter outside of the scope of this tutorial anyways, but uh, so for right now, we're just going to do an h1 with angular-google-maps by Jeremy Stover. All right, so this is going to be fairly simple. Uh, we just have a couple things that we have to do first, and then we're going to have a map rolling on the page. I'll teach you how to get some markers in, uh, and then... That's it. Let's uh, get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is uh, let's go into our index.html file. We need to make sure a couple things are included. Uh, you have this, and this is all in the getting started guide for Angular-Google-Maps. So that's fairly easy to uh, get rolling. But first, you need this maps.googleapis.com uh, like uh, script <clears throat> script source, uh, and all that's doing is actually getting all the map uh, map stuff in that uh, angular-google-maps can't really legally put inside of their uh, directive. Um, so uh, it's just a second dependency. Uh, this is the only one that will not be automatically uh, downloaded and installed. Uh, so just grab it from their CDN, which is the maps.googleapis, blah, blah, blah. Uh, two things that come with it are the low dash and the actual angular-google-maps directive file. Um, and those are both going to be in your Bower components when you use Bower. So uh, after we do that, after we include those, or make sure those three files are included, we're going to go into app.js, and in our dependencies, we're just going to add google-maps. Okay, that's all done. Save. Uh, and that is just pulling the uh, module uh, for the um, google-maps, which is what angular-google-maps uh, uses as their module when they're creating the directive. Um, all right, so after we've done that, we're going to jump back into main.html, and uh, what you need to do next is add Google Map Directive 
and I'm just going to autocomplete that. All right. All right, so now that we have this uh, directive with the attribute uh, Google Map, Google Dash Map, um, we need a couple things for this to get started. Uh, we're going to need a, and these are all uh, required dependencies, we need a center value. And what this is going to be, it's going to be an object with latitude is, we'll just mark it as 30, and longitude as negative 120. Okay. So very simple. Um, it just needs an object, and at that at the base level of that object, we'll have a latitude and longitude uh, value. Um, latitude goes from zero to ninety, and longitude goes from positive one eighty to negative one eighty. Uh, so it can be any value in between that. And when you first start the map, that's what that is going to be set to. Uh, and uh, if you know anything about Angular, this is actually creating an object in the scope. Uh, very simple. Um, and it's not going to be solid, it is still bound to the center object, so if you move, like if I was printing out, if this was an actual named variable, not just like a um, anonymous variable, whatever you want to call it, uh, you would actually see, you can actually print this value out somewhere else. Uh, but we're not going to do that right now, we're going to uh, get this map just showing up. Uh, so we have the center, which is the only thing that, oh we, and we need zoom also rather. Zoom, and we're just going to set this to equal 12 for now. Uh, so <clears throat> if we were to save this and view it, uh, in fact, I'll show you, there's not going to be anything there. Um, and you're like, oh, well, why? Why isn't there anything there? And I'm going to tell you. Uh, the big reason is because we need to add CSS to actually define a height for the uh, Google Map container. Um, and that's required for any sort of iframe type deal. It has to have that uh, height and width defined, um, and this is automatically defining the width based on the height or based on the container that it's in. Um, so you just need to have at least one of those things defined and it will show up. So we're just going to do dot angular dash google dash, can't type today, container. I'm just going to give that height of 400 pixels. And then do whatever you want pixels. As long as it's not percentages, it has to be a solid value. Um, so yeah, whatever you decide to use. I'm a pixel guy myself. Uh, so now that we have that, we should be able to see the map when we refresh. Bam. We have a map and we're in the middle of nowhere. Leave. Where are we at? We're off the uh, coast of Baja, California. So now right now, oops, right now we are just hard coding this stuff in. So let's get it actually bound by a scope variable. Uh, and if you know anything about Yo Angular or how everything works, um, this main.html in any view that you have, any view that you create through Yo Angular, is going to have a controller and very possibly a service attached to it. Um, so right now we have main.js, which is directly attached to main.html. And the entire scope, everything that goes inside of this file, uh, where did that go? Everything that goes inside of this file is actually encapsulated in the main.js scope. Uh, so this little variable is going to have everything that we need. So, um, so first off, let's, uh, let's get a scope.map variable in there. Um, and what we, if you can see right here, what we're declaring there is the actual center. So we're, we can bind that uh, in an actual variable and do whatever the hell we want with it. And we're going to do the center or, and the zoom also. Uh, so we're going to do, we're going to create a scope variable called map equals object. I'm going to do center, another object with latitude of 30, and, uh, well actually, let's do what we have up here, and do 45, and longitude is negative 73. All right, okay, another <clears throat> variable called zoom, and we're just going to set that to 8 for right now. Uh, all right, so if we save that, we go back into main.html and we just do map.center. So uh, when you're actually declaring these variables, this entire thing is assumed scope. So you don't need to put scope.map.center because you're already inside of the scope. That's already the scope. And it's kind of weird saying it like that, but that's the scope that you're in. Uh, so you can actually just do map.center, which is map.center is the object of this latitude and longitude. <clears throat> All right, so if we do map.center and we do again map.zoom, It'll still work perfectly fine. Reload the page. Oh, we had an error. Main controller is not a function. Oh, what did I forget? Main JS. Uh, oh, that's why. Whoops. 
That doesn't need a semicolon. Bam. All right, so now we have a map, and we are in Montreal. Oh, close to Montreal. So zoom out. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, all right, so now uh, one of the first things that you're going to want to do, you can do this you know, forever, but let's just create a marker. Um, so we're going to do scope.marker equals object, because it's the same exact thing, uh, and except for center. Uh, marker takes a variable called chords. So we're going to call it that, which is an object uh, that has a latitude also. And it's going to be, we're just going to put it in the same exact spot that we had this 45. Uh, longitude is negative 73, so it'll pop up in the exact center of the map, and uh, that's actually all we need for uh, marker. That's the only required value. So if we go here, uh, whenever you're creating a marker or anything that's going to be inside the Google map, you have to put it inside of that Google map uh, directive, uh, this little HTML structure. So we're going to create the, uh, can't type, marker here, finish it out. And then here, the, again, the only thing that is required for marker to exist is the chords. So we're just going to do marker.chords. And I believe that was what it was called. Let me double check. Scope.marker.chords. Yep. OK. So now <clears throat> we refresh the page. It should automatically have a marker in the dead center of the page. And we can move around once we're. And that marker will say where it's at. Um, we can also do this and do uh, map.center. So as you change that map.center, like you're literally changing it, uh, it's going to change since it's uh, <clears throat> binded both ways. Um, it's going to move along with, uh, or the marker is going to move along with the center of the map. And obviously you're seeing flickering. Markers aren't really built to be moved around like that, so it's having to redraw it um, every time that it moves, you know, a pixel. Uh, so we're going to go back. We're going to Control Z that. Um, so uh, let's do a list of markers. Um, so there's two ways that you can do this. The way that they recommend is using the markers, uh, using the markers <clears throat> attribute. So it would be markers. Um, I don't really prefer to use that. I feel like I have much more control over the way that things are sorted and things like that. I have to do a lot of work with sorting uh, pins on maps. Um, so I prefer to use uh, ng repeat. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to create a list of markers, very like very appropriately named scope.marker list equals object. And actually, it's not going to be equal to an object. It's going to be equal to an array of objects that have this uh, latitude and longitude inside of it. So enter, paste, comma. I'm just going to copy and paste this, copy. Paste, 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 paste. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just up the, right, let's say the 45, 46. We're just going to um, increment this so there is, and you can actually see the difference, 48, 49, and this one's going to go negative 74, negative 75, negative 76, negative 77, and negative 78. Perfect. All right, this is exactly what we want. We're going to save that out, and nothing's going to happen on the page because we haven't made this. So again, you can do markers, uh, which I'm not going to get into uh, how to actually display a list of markers that way. We're just going to do another uh, marker like this, and we're going to do data-ng-repeat equals <clears throat> mark, marker in marker list. All right, and we're going to do chords equals marker. So if you remember, it, when you put in that chords, it's only looking for latitude and longitude in the base object. So if you remember, each one of these objects has a latitude and longitude at the base. Um, so if we had like this object dot chords dot latitude and this object dot chords dot longitude, then you'd have to put marker dot chords here. But we don't, it's in the base, so it doesn't really matter. So if we displayed this out, then you would see a list of different pins. Bam, list of different pins it is beautiful and awesome, and there's a lot of them. Okay, so that's you know pretty standard. It's cool. Um, and with that, let's say you had this data model 
Uh, and again, you know, sometimes working with JSON is a little confusing, but if you can get uh, find the base object and loop through that base object, uh, let's say if you're trying to uh, plot all the like the parking spaces or free parking spots in San Francisco, or like you know bike parking in San Francisco, or basketball courts in like Oakland or something like that was terrible. I have no idea if there's basketball courts in Oakland. Who knows? Um, but regardless, if you're trying to place anything and you, can, and you can get that data, then you can very easily place it this way if you have if you can get that data into a loop, just like we did with that repeat. So it's basically just redrawing this map, uh, or redrawing that HTML element over and over and over again with that new data. Uh, so let's see if we can make a polyline. Uh, so a polyline is basically just a line. It's what they use when you are getting directions somewhere, uh, and it draws the line through the streets, etc. And uh, you can draw whatever you want. Uh, it'll all display inside of the map. Uh, so we're going to get that done really quick. We're going to do polyline. And uh, inside that polyline, it takes one variable, and that is path. And what's cool is polyline is also looking for a list of objects that have lat and long at its base, or at its base. So it would be, ironically enough, Marker list. We're just going to draw a line over, uh, on top of, underneath, but on the, along the same path as that list of markers. So you'll see if we refresh the page, you're going to see a line coming out. Bam! Right there. Bam! You got yourself a line. All right, that's awesome. That's cool. So now uh, let's say you wanted to change the color. So uh, path, along with many other things for this Angular dash Google dash maps, takes a bunch of different um, attributes. Another one that it takes is, I believe it's called stroke. Let me see. Yes, stroke. Uh, and stroke takes an object. Um, oops, that is not how you do that. Stroke takes an object uh, with things like color, line width, um, is it draggable? Actually, no, that's separate. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of different things you get add to it, but we're just going to do color for right now. And I already have this color saved, so we're just going to copy and paste it from down here. Uh, and this is just going to make a red line. Um, really simple. It's just one way that you can customize this polyline. And again, that is completely bindable. You can uh, pull that from your scope. Like if we uh, wanted to have, you know, polyline stuff, or if you wanted to populate that from specific data on a server, it doesn't matter. So you're going to have 50 to what, however many polylines you want. And they can all be individually sized and uh, colored and like uh, opaque, etc. Um, so that's cool. We have a line on the page. Um, again, you can have that follow whatever Latin long that you want. Um, you can make that draggable, so you could actually like uh, do the two-way data binding with that actual position, and you can do that with the markers too. The markers can be set to draggable, so like if you're trying to like I don't know do something where you're saving spots based on map input, you can save that spot that way. Uh, so the very last thing that we're going to do is you know let's say each of these markers had a little bit of data attached to it. Um, obviously, you don't want to spit that out over here or over here. Uh, you want to be able to click on the marker because that's intuitive. You want to tap on it, see what information it has to give. So uh, inside of this um, list of markers, we're going to do another directive um, called window. And this is another Angular dash Google dash Maps thing, obviously. And the only thing that window takes, um, well, actually, it can take a bunch of things, but uh, we're only really interested in this. And it is let me copy and paste it from down here. Um, so there, I don't, I don't believe that there's any uh, defaults or uh, rather necessary attributes that you need to put into this window. But the is visible on click is really cool because obviously you want to tap it or click it and uh, have that data just show up on the page. So um, and after you do that, everything that you put inside of this, which this needs to be tabbed over, anything that you put inside of this, like a YouTube video or whatever, it should automatically resize that. Uh, um, window object that'll pop up in a second. So we're going to actually, before we do anything here, it's going to be a bunch of blank windows, we're going to modify this marker list. We're actually going to do message. And message is going to be uh, marker one, message, marker, oh, in quotes, marker two, message marker three very tedious message marker four message 
marker five. All right, so you basically just you just add another um, variable onto that object, uh, and it's very simple. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, wait, yep, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna save that out, um, and what that's gonna let us do is, if you remember, each it's looping through these, and every time it recreates this, it recreates it with that version of the marker that is at the index of whatever it creates. So it's gonna loop through, and each one of these is gonna have an index, and it's basically just being like, all right, marker is equal to like maker list index of like zero or one or two or three or four. Uh, so what we can do now is um, we're just going to print out marker dot message. And just for fun, just so you know that uh, we're actually, you know, looping through this and getting it indexed correctly. We're just going to print out um, this variable is always available. So if you want to do any secondary array searches, um, you can actually use this index here. It's really, really convenient. Um, like, especially if you're dealing with like multi-dimensional arrays, like uh, if you're building games or anything like that. Um, so you have this here. Bam, we're going to refresh the page. It automatically refreshes. That's cool. All right, so now that we have this, we have no more errors except for this plug-in thing that constantly crashes on me. All right, so now we're in here. So what you expect would happen when you click this is you have index of zero. If you remember, we put that index there and the marker of one. And it has that, uh, and it has that um, variable that we set the uh, message. So um, if you know anything about arrays in JavaScript or most other languages, they're uh, indexed by zero going up. So marker one is at index zero, marker two is at index one, marker three is at index two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, fairly simple to understand. And obviously if you click the first marker, nothing happens. And you can obviously click out of all those. Um, but sadly, I think that is all the information that I want to share with you guys for this tutorial. Um, if you have any major questions, you can comment in the YouTube uh, comments. Um, I probably talk too fast, I do that fairly often. But uh, if you guys want to see uh, kind of a little bit better documentation or more in-depth in depth documentation, just uh, jump over to this angular-google-maps.org. Uh, they have documentation on all of these things. Um, some It's a little, uh, little scarce, like there's not too much in some of the things that you wish there was more documentation on. Um, but they're working on it, it is getting better every single day. Uh, and if you're really curious how to create directives of your own, how to create uh, things of your own with JavaScript, or with Angular rather, uh, this egghead.io website is fantastic. They have a bunch of different free Angular lessons. And uh, when you get to the way more advanced stuff, you it is not free anymore. You have to get a pro subscription. Uh, but it is totally worth it. Um, and honestly, there's enough Angular tutorials on the web that you should have no problem at all getting up and running within a couple weeks. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any more questions, um, just comment on the YouTube video, uh, and I will try to respond as quickly as possible. Have a nice day.